Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. Today we've got 2D lighting, particle systems, meshlets, and more. So let's get into it. Have you ever missed type something in the system arguments for a Bevy system? In that case, you may have seen the error, the trait bound is not satisfied. Argus is a new VS Code extension that could potentially help you with that. So here on the left, I've got a fairly small system, and I haven't used a reference for a component here, which should be an exclusive or mutable reference. So there's a bunch of issues. Using Argus, we can go to the linear movement system and start digging in a bit. Each of these little X's means unsatisfiable, which is what we're looking for if we don't implement a trait. So in this case, we found transform needs to implement query data, and there's a number of more dropdowns here. It does seem that you have to know how to fix this on your own. For example, there is an implementation here for end mute transform, which is how the system is supposed to run. And it does seem like it collides a little bit with Rust Analyzer. So if you're using Argus, you'll want to make sure that you disable Rust Analyzer and vice versa. Otherwise, Rust Up will conflict and both of them will try to take ownership. And now after we've fixed with the exclusive reference, we see that Argus is reporting no more issues with our traits. Argus is research software and relies on the new trait solver for Rust. Thus, it is very experimental, very under active development, and is incomplete and unsound in various ways. That doesn't mean it's not still helpful, but you may run into some issues. On to our next topic, multi-threaded Wasm. Bevy was designed to run well in parallel environments, but when targeting WebAssembly, Bevy only runs single-threaded. This Wasm multi-threading PR takes a first step towards multi-threading on Wasm. There's plenty still to do, but it is possible that Bevy could lead the way in this scenario. Meshlets are something we talked a little bit about last week, and they did in fact get merged behind an experimental flag. This is in the same category as Nanite in Unreal Engine and meant for scenes with so much geometry that a single triangle can be a single pixel. There was a lot of work put into this one over many months and there's still plenty of work to follow up on. Having this feature integrated into the code base will make future collaboration on it easier. In Bevy's CI, the examples are run and sometimes screenshot. It's therefore useful for the RNG or the random number generator to be deterministic or seeded. This makes it easier for CI to identify changes, but it also makes it a little bit more confusing for new users when looking at these examples. That's why it's nice to have these new explanations so that new users looking at these examples know what this is and why it's there. Under the hood, Bevy ECS uses the concept of archetypes, which are collections of entities that have the same set of components. The two metadata structures archetype, which is the metadata for a single archetype within a world, and entity location, the location of an entity in that archetype, now both implement query data, which enables querying for that data, that metadata, in systems. This work was done in 12,398. A new 2D primitive, the analyst, was added to Bevy Math. An analyst is a ring, that is, the space between two circles. The point trait, which previously represented a point in space of any dimension, was moved out of the cubic splines module and is now named vector space. It's also been made slightly more generic. 12,394 implements solid and dotted styles for line gizmos. A new audio example shows off how to play a soundtrack with both fade in and fade out. And in 12,135, 2D meshes now support wireframes. As always, Alice's weekly merge chain is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. Bevy World Swap is in the showcases because it's an experiment and hasn't been released yet. It's an experiment specifically in swapping a Bevy app's world at runtime. It currently uses a Bevy fork, although there are a few PRs trying to get back to depending on main. RoboShoot is a Mega Man inspired roguelite that includes enemies that embody every game developer's nightmare, triangles. This 3D character and environment combine a number of different character and dungeon assets in this person's attempt to learn Bevy and Rust. It takes advantage of Bevy TNUA, which is a character controller, and Bevy Hanabi for particles. Voltum is a drop match game that I found myself playing quite a bit while I was at Rust Nation UK. It is nice to have something to do with your hands when you're listening to talks. This game puts a twist on the popular drop match game using different shapes, buffs, and debuffs. It's released on Android and you can download it now. An in-progress 2D particle system plugin that calculates particles on the CPU before taking advantage of GPU instancing was released this week. One of the main goals is WebGL support. A later update included custom particle material traits that enables you to add your own fragment shader to any particle spawner. This showcase plays with uniform mesh sampling for grass and vegetation placement. 
The Discord thread has a number of great suggestions for different algorithms and approaches, including this R2 blog post, a blog post from the creator of The Witness, and an explanation of blue noise. Hovering mouse effects are shown off in this showcase for a Chrome-like Bevy dev tool. And this 2D lighting implementation includes three different live WASM demos. The soft shadows are based on a sign distance function that is computed every frame in a compute shader, and the lighting is then ray-marched as a post-process step. We've got more lighting in this GPU-based ray tracer that includes mass-preserving rotations as well as 2D lighting and shadows. This future Pokemon-style game gains chest monster bosses and health bars in this showcase. If you like 2D mining, crafting, and magic, the idea for this game is an ARPG with light survival mechanics. Classes, crafting, towns, questing, and procedural dungeons. Loot, skill tree, style, progression, and more. Single player or online with a party, so far it's only been a few weeks of work. The beautiful lighting for this is powered by a fork of Bevy Magic Light 2D, which also includes a few changes. Soft body simulations are in fact squishy. The goal of these simulations is to build something like Jelly Car, which has very bouncy physics. Currently, collision resolution, internal springs, and internal gas pressure are all implemented and stable. This 2.5D shoot 'em up takes advantage of Bevy Blender Components workflow to create some really nice intro animations and level specific animations, or what they're referred to as set pieces. This is one of the large goals of the project, so seeing this early is not surprising. This post on Mastodon includes 3D hexagonal tile maps. There's some debug info on the left that describes the varying heights, water, mountains, and more. And finally, for our showcases, we've got some updates to this Animal Crossing inspired game, including menu options, a pause menu, world settings, and more. Into our crate releases, we've got Bevy Enoki. You'll recognize this from one of the showcases. The 2D particle system we saw in that showcase got its first crate release right at the end of this cycle. The Inoki particle system is a CPU calculated particle system that uses GPU instancing and works well with Wasm. It provides a material trait that lets you implement your own fragment shader. And additionally, spawner configuration is provided via RON files, which can be hot reloaded. Bevy MQTT got its first release. It's currently being used to visualize Internet of Things system information, which is an area where MQTT is a popular protocol. Bevy Defer 0.8 got released, Bevy defers an asynchronous runtime integrated with Bevy. 0 8 brings the ability to push resources or even shared references to the world onto thread local storage and get access. Cancelable async tweening and the ability to react to Bevy mod picking states with signals. Hex is a utility crate for working with hexagons and it got its 0 0.16 release. The 0 0.16 release brings a complete rework of the edge and vertex direction system and the addition of grid features with oriented vertices and edges. These grid features are particularly useful for strategy and building games on hexagonal maps. Also notable, and one of the things I love most about the Bevy and Rust ecosystems, are that Hex now has 12 Bevy examples showcasing usage. This makes it much easier to onboard to actually using the crate in your own game. Space Editor got its 0.5 release. Space Editor enables the creation or modification of levels, scenes, and prefabs in a GUI-based way. 0.5 brings support for sprites and animations, Bevy XPBD2D, which is a physics library, and a number of quality of life changes. Also notable is that 0.5 is the Bevy 0.13 release for Space Editor. We've got a number of great educational resources this week, starting off with Yarn Spinner. Yarn Spinner is a tool and a textual format for constructing game dialogue. Yarn Spinner Rust is an implementation of this tooling for, well, Rust. That brings us to the tutorial, which covers Yarn Spinner's basic features, including hooking into events, displaying dialogue lines when requested, and a little bit of UI work. This developer spent some time figuring out how to build and deploy Bevy for both Android and Wasm platforms. That's what this tutorial features. When it comes to understanding how Bevy works, Bevy has a number of different crates, and it can be hard to get a deep view into what each one is doing. This post dives into the Bevy 0.12.1 version of the Bevy ECS crate, and covers entities, archetypes, tables, queries, and more. If you're a beginner, it's a great place to gain some vocabulary, and if you've been using Bevy a while and want to get into contributing, it's a great place to start understanding the Bevy ECS crate. The GPU particle research series continued with more Bevy Hanabi for parts two and part three. This series currently focuses only on Bevy Hanabi, which is a GPU particle-based system for Bevy. We've already covered most of the pull requests that were merged this week in the overview, but we've got a full list here. And as always, if you want to contribute, we've got 
the pull requests that were opened this week, as well as the issues that were opened this week. Pull requests could just need you to run them and reply on the PR that it worked for you, while issues could require a little bit more work, coming up with your own reproductions or even a fix. That's it for this week in the Bevy ecosystem. I will see you next week.